All right, we're back, and it's Comp 213, and it's Week 12, Lesson 12, uh, Part 2. Again, web interface design, we're talking about more modern HTML5 um, elements and CSS3. And one of the things we just talked about um, is Flash and how it's not compatible. Um, let's take a look at other things. Here's some HTML5 uh, audio in source elements. Here's something we can use. I want to use audio. I have a local MP3 file, right? Here's a local MP3 file, and I want to play it in my uh, audio. Well, here's what the audio element would look like. Am I going to try a, an example with you? No. Why? Most often, right? We want we don't want to include an audio element anywhere in our page unless we're, we're sampling a song or we're sampling some kind of uh, audio effect that you're selling or you're sampling some. You're maybe maybe uh, you have a, you're hosting a site that sells sounds or sound clips. Then that's a good use case for for HTML audio. But unless you're doing some kind of game, right? which, you know, in this class is out of scope, um, you know, you wouldn't use an audio element at all in your design. Right? Not anymore. It's still considered quite a little bit passe. Okay, so I'm mentioning it to you, but do I expect you guys to know how to do this on the exam? Absolutely not. Please don't study this to figure out how to do this. And if I really wanted you to, I'd say, go up on Google, Google how to do it, and then get it done, right? Or go to W3 schools, and, and there's an API documentation there for how to do it. Um, HTML5 video, though, is something that definitely we use more often. Do I expect you to remember how to do HTML5 video? I would say, again, no, because we don't, I mean, how many sites nowadays use HTML5 video that's embedded in the site? Um, more often than not, guess what I use? Links to YouTube. <laughs> Links to YouTube, right? Because YouTube uh, or um, Vimeo, those are the two uh, sites. Uh, we'll go to YouTube and Vimeo for a second for those people who don't know what they are, right? But just in case. YouTube, right? If I go to YouTube and um, and let's see if my, my browser is going to go there, I'll let that load up and I'll go to Vimeo, Vimeo, oh, if I can spell it properly. Those are the two uh, sites. So if I go to Vimeo.com, right, um, you know, for ad-free HD videos, I want to, uh, again, there's, you definitely, those are the two for, file formats or uh, files that I would go to, again, from a uh, more often than not, people do things on YouTube. I do things on YouTube a lot, um, you know, uh, as an example, right? So uh, am I going to run things again again from, a, um, you know, when, when I do stuff so that I, I have everything embedded in my website? Absolutely not. I'm probably going to point to a link, uh, to a, some kind of a playlist, or I'm actually going to point to, to the, uh, the URL on, U on YouTube. So example for me, if I want to go to my links on YouTube, let me just go to my, um, my uh, channel here. Again, channels are free. I am what I do here is, and it's what I'm doing right now is I'm embedding my channel, uh, my my videos on my channel. So I create a channel; it's free. And here's my video manager on YouTube. And in YouTube, I can see that I can see all of my video, my lessons, right? So what am I going to do? What's the best thing to do? What I would recommend if you're going to have videos is give the link to the video. That's better, and let you let your audience go to that to YouTube to play the video, not locally on your machine. That's not the way we do things as much anymore. So if you notice, if I want to copy the link address, or if I click on edit, you know, and if I say uh, info and settings, or my subtitles in CC, it tells me stuff. I can download the MP4, right? I can download a version that's local to my machine. That's something we can do as well. If I want to include all my videos locally on my machi machine, I can cer certainly do that. I can re-download them if I don't have them. That's no problem. Um, but... Um, if I look at info and settings for this last video for week 11, this is another course, uh, Comp 391, Lesson 11, Part 5, it gives you the video URL, right? So here's my video URL, and that's what I recommend you do, a video, uh, a link to your video, maybe with a thumbnail, right? So you have a little bit of a picture to show the video, and then you have a link, and then it takes you to YouTube. That's better, right? And with, uh, you know, the plays maybe in another tab, you know, something. So you keep your website open, and meanwhile, it shifts you to another tab, and you can play your video, and then close off the tab, and go back to your website. That's the right way to do things these days, as opposed to having them embedded in your in your website, unless there's something that belongs to you, local. You have a local MP3 file or some kind of M4V file that you're playing, something that you've downloaded, in this particular case, MP4, right? Here's my raw part, here's my raw file is an MP4, right? If I have this raw file and I want to include this raw file on my website, that makes sense because it's mine, right? I'm not going to try and embed YouTube in my site. That's not as popular these days. And also, not as great in, in terms of SEO, right? Iframes, bad idea. Avoid it, please. 
So if I test you on anything, if I tell you, is iframes, here's a question that you might see on an exam. Embedding iframes, is this a good idea? True or false? The, the answer would be, it's false. It's not a good idea, right? True would be, is a good idea. False would be a bad idea, right? Or it's, it's not a good idea to, to, do, to use iframes, right? So the, I think it would be the, the question would be phrased like this. It's a good idea to embed iframes in, your, in most modern websites. The answer would be false. It's not a good idea. Please don't do this. You might see that kind of question on the exam. But you may not see something like, how do you do it? Show me how do you embed, you know, uh, you know, video on your on your site. I won't ask you to do that. And here's an example of what that would look like. All right? So here's an iframe. An iframe is actually what it creates is a container where your video lives. And you tell the machine how big the video is. An example of it would be 640 by 385. You can also mention this in CSS as well. And then... Um, or you can view the video on a link. This is a good idea. When you view, if you're going to use iframes for whatever reason, let's say you have a client that says, "No, no, no, I want to embed my YouTube on my site. I want to embed my." If they really, in, in, you know, in, uh, insist, certainly you can use the iframe to do that. But then you want to give a link to, to, to you know, to the video on on the web as well to give them the option to say, "Hey, let's go to my YouTube video. Let's not do it here. Let's not embed it here locally on my iframe." Right. Because not compatible with mobile, for the most part. Okay, and now to the fun stuff. This is what I really want to do: a CSS3 transform property or a CSS3 transition property. Let's tra talk about these kind of things and how to use them. Okay, so again, I'm gonna I'm gonna invite you now as I'm kicking off my Visual Studio 2013. Uh, you know, as an example, and this is probably the last semester I'll be using Visual Studio 2013. I'm gonna be moving to use Visual Studio 2015 probably in next semester only because it's been released and I'm going to move to Windows 10, which I highly recommend for you guys as well, if we're going to all move that way. I know some people will still stick with Windows 8, Windows 7, which is totally fine as well, but I'm going to move over to Windows Windows 10, right? Uh, only because it looks to be, I've tested it a bunch of times, it looks to be something that's fairly solid nowadays. Okay, so I'm, I'm kicking off Visual Studio, uh, you know, again, uh, 2013, and I'm going to do a new project, but I'm going to download some elements uh, from a previous project that I have up on YouTube. So I don't want to just like, you know, start from scratch kind of thing, right? So let's do this. So we're going to new project. I remember how we do this new project. Um, I can choose ASP.NET web application. We're not making an ASP.NET web, web application. All we're using is the template to create our, our project. And then I'm going to, uh, down here where it says web application 6, I'm going to call this comp uh, 213 uh, lesson 12 part one, right? and then I'm going to also create a Git repository and press OK. And here I am with this uh, lesson. Now, I'm not going to include anything here. I'm going to make it so that I use the empty application. Uh, that's what I'm going to be using, and I'm going to press OK. Now, what this does, is, of course, is create my empty application. And if I'm in my Solution Explorer, right, this is where I have my, my application files. If you notice, I have nothing. Right, we need to include some files, and for this, uh, I'm going to go up on GitHub. Let's go to GitHub for a second. There's GitHub, and on my GitHub, if you notice, I have the latest version of our files we've been using is uh, Comp Two One Three Lesson Ten Part One. I can go there for a second. So a couple lessons back, right? And what I'm going to do is just to keep, get a fresh copy, just so that I'm not tainted, and you guys have the same as I do. I'm going to download. The latest copy of this this project here that I have up on GitHub, uh, with you know download a zip file of this. So there it is. I'm going to un uninstall it or um, sorry, I'm going to go into my downloads right now, and I'm going to find this lesson. So comp two one three and download download it. Oops, I'm going to move it up. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to go to my desktop for a second. Let's go to my desktop, and on my desktop I'm just going to kind of paste it there. So here's my zip file. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to unzip it, and I'm going to extract it into its own folder. So there's my folder. I'm just going to, I'm now I'm going to get rid of my zip file. All right, so here it is. Now, I could start off a project with this thing, but I don't need all the piece parts to it. I do need a couple things. I do need to have um, all this index stuff, and I'm going to show you how to do it if you're going to import stuff from a previous project. How do I do that? Again, two ways. Um, I could open existing item, right, or add existing item, or I can just drag and drop, which I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to take these two files, 
my dashboard and my index.html, and I'm going to drag and drop them into my project. There they are. Make sense? My index.html. And then I also in my content, my whole content folder, I'm going to take this and drag and drop my content folder onto my project. There we go. But essentially, it is week 10, um, you know, or uh, lesson, lesson 10, part 1. Uh, I have all my main CSS and my reset. I don't have to, I don't have to pull all, the, all together, so I can start it off to test it. I should always test stuff that I download. Let's test and see that I got all the piece parts I need, and I do, right? So this is what it looks like. Right, I need to rename this stuff so that it makes sense. I'm going to take away some of these things from my home page and get rid of my dashboard. I don't have a contact us page right now. If you notice, it goes to this uh, an empty site. There is no contact us page right now. And there, I mean, link one, link three, and link four don't go anywhere either because I don't have a contact page. Okay, so let's stop uh, stop debugging, and I'm just going to close down this stuff right now. So I've got this one. It says uh, lesson 12 part one. Let's customize my index.html a little bit. To make sure that it's the same. And if you notice it says web app is comp213, it's obviously going to be lesson. This is my, my template lesson 12, uh, part one, and the creation date is today, uh, July 27th, right? Okay, uh, I also want to rename my title. So it's going to be lesson 12, part one. It says lesson 10, part one. Um, right now I'm going to replace my contact. I only want, I don't want my dashboard. In fact, I'll get rid of it. I don't want to have a dashboard. I just want to have some blank links just to show you my, my toolbar uh, from a mobile perspective. That's what it's really there for. I'm just going to redo this one and put link link two and this one here. I'm going to get rid of my contact uh, link and put this as link five. So back to the old way. Okay, cool. So I've got that stuff. And you know what? I don't care about my login form anymore. It's my login form. So I want to get rid of it completely. Um, this whole form element all together, it's going to be gone. Right? And now, if you follow what I do, you have what I have, which is pretty much nothing. <laughs> right? If I run this thing again, and say it says forms example, we're not going to do a forms example, we're going to do a transform. Here's my transform example. Right? And we're going to do uh, a CSS transform. So we're just going to go here and go CSS transform. Here's my CSS transform example, how we do that. And let's run this thing and see what it does right now. So I just get this. So it says transform example. And I need something to transform, right? I can't just have a transform without doing something with it, right? So what do I put in there, right? Well, let's make something, right? So it's very simple. Um, I'm going to uh, make, use a div element. So here's our div element. Um, and then inside of our div element, we're going to call this, uh, this div element, we're going to give it a, an ID of um, my uh, transform. We're just going to call it transform. How about we call it transformer, right? For those people who like the transformers, huh? How about that? Okay, there we go. So we have a thing called transformer. Here's a transformer, and we want to style this thing a little bit. Let's put a, a border around this thing to show you what I'm talking about here. So how do I do that? Of course, I'm going to go into my, I'm going to stop debugging. I'm going to go into my main.css, and we're going to hit this. I'm just going to go all the way to the bottom here. I'm not going to change any CSS that I have in there. Even the CSS doesn't apply anymore because I've erased some stuff. And I'm going to go in there, I'm going to make a new ID we're going to call this ID transformer, right? This is going to hit or target our div tag, right? And I want a couple things for my div tag for them for my transformer. One thing is I want it to have a border style, right? So here's my border. Instead of one pixel like we normally make it, let's make it a couple pixels. So two pixels. Uh, we'll definitely make this uh, solid, right? And we'll use a um, <clears throat> a special color. We'll we'll make it so that I'm going to call it a uh, uh, blue for now. Right, but instead of accepting blue, I'm going to use Visual Studio Web Essentials to click on this thing, which gives me this cu couple color elements, and I'll get my color wheel, and I'm going to choose another blue, some other blue. There we go. Maybe a darker blue, but not quite the blue, not quite the, that that uh, you know blue that I originally had. There we go. So it's mine. If you want to do what I did, and if you don't have Visual Studio Web Essentials, it's going to be five six five six a three. Okay, there is my blue. So if I kind of re return to that, here's my transformer. And if I, you know, was to run this thing, there's nothing in my div tag right now. I'm just going to have a solid board, a solid line like this. That's what the border would look like. Right? Makes sense. I want my uh, my transformer also, uh, the one I'm going to transform, to have an 80% uh, width and so on. Right? So let's go back to that. 
So I want to have uh, margins for my, my div tag margin, right? It's going to be zero auto, right? And my width is going to be 80%. Uh, now we're going back to that idea, right? All right, so now if I refresh, if I go back here and refresh my screen, then you're going to see that it, uh, there's, just, there's, not, there's just one line here. The reason why it's a line, there's nothing. I don't have anything in my div tag right now, but it looks like it's centered, right? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Right. Maybe maybe eighty percent is too big. Let's make it fifty percent. So a bit a bit of a smaller uh, um, item. And if I refresh, it's fifty percent. All right, good, good, good. Okay, now um, let's put some stuff in there, right? Well, I want some kind of a paragraph tag. Let's put a paragraph tag in there, right? So I can do this paragraph tag, and inside there, I want some lorem text of about two hundred uh, characters. Again, how did I do that for those people to, if you don't remember? P greater than sign lorem 200. If you have Visual Studio Web Essentials, it'll generate this with a tab when you press tab. Okay, so let's see what that looks like now. So some kind of content. And when I go back and refresh, it looks like this. Right, well, I definitely want to add some padding in here. Remember what padding does from a box model perspective is it adds to the box model. I want my padding to be 1% all around. Okay, 1%. So let's do that. So how do I do that? Main. So I go padding. I, I usually try and put padding and, width and margins together. So I go margin is zero auto. Padding, however, is 1%. You can also use M's. You can also use pixels, whatever you want. All right. Let's try and see that what that does for my padding. Let's refresh and refresh. There we go. A little bit of a padding all the way around, 1%. And that means when I go kind of scale down, it keeps that same flavor of stuff. All right, good. So there's my thing. Now I want to transform this thing, right? I want to transform. I want to use some translation to transform this thing somehow. Let's take a look at our example here. So I want to rotate this thing three degrees. How do I do that? Well, I use my transform element to rotate it, and it says three deg. Okay, we're going to go back and see how that works. Okay, let's go into um, our CSS. And here I'm going to use CSS transform. So we're going to type transform, right? I'm going to rotate, and then three degrees, like it says, three deg. Now look what it tells me in, in Visual Studio. This is why I love Visual Studio so much lately. It gives me this little underline here. It says, hey, man, browser compatibility issues. You want to do this transform? Awesome. But you know what? We need you to add in this missing vendor-specific properties for transform, like the dash moz, the dash ms, the dash o, and the dash webkit. So I can't just do this. I got to add all the other transform elements in there. So there's like, th I can use this one, and for me to do it right, I have to use the Moz, MS, Microsoft, o, o for Opera, and WebKit to put all the other ones in. So it's four more lines I got to put in here to do the proper transform. I'm going to take this, right, and I go like this one, two, three, four. And then in front of there, I'm going to put the uh, dash Moz, right? Here's my Mozilla, right? Let's see if this is done right. I'm going to look at that in a second. And this one would be the dash ms, right? So I got to do, right? The dash o for Opera, right? And then there's one more, the dash webkit, right? I got to this webkit. Now, the thing is with this, if it says rotate three degrees, if I was to type moz, and I'm not sure what it is, I can say rotate, and you can see what I, I can try to put in three degrees. It does allow that, no problem. And it will give you code hinting. But if you notice how they're grayed out, almost how they're like, they're not as strong as this one, right? And this is browser compatibility, missing all those things, right? Well, they're there, right? But well, let's see if they're compatible or not. And there's a site that I can, I can all direct to in a second to give you this proper code in a second without this underline. Let's run this thing and see what it does. I'm going to rotate this thing three degrees. What does it mean? Let's refresh. So the whole thing is now rotated three degrees, right? Okay. I like that. So what if, here's something, I want to make a special effect, right? So when I hover over it, it rotates three degrees. How do I do that? Well, it's pretty simple, right? Uh, let's move this stuff out of here and make it so that when I rotate, when I hover over my transformer, so here's my transformer, I'm calling this this, and I'm going to do the hover, hover effect over my transformer, and I want to take this transform stuff that I just wrote, and put it in here. 
So when I hover over it, I, normally I don't, it's not transformed by three degrees, right? But when I hover over it, it's going to move at three degrees. Let's see how that works. Make sense? That's more of an effect, right? So uh, let's refresh. So now it's not transformed. When I hover over it, hey, what happened? How come it didn't transform my stuff, man? I'm going to cry. It's not working properly. How come? Because transform, right? The hover is a nice idea, right? The idea to hover when I, when I, when I hover over it. Like I hover over this, right? What's the problem? Why is it not working? Well, in order for us to know this, I'm going to refer you back to the API documentation. An API stands for Application um, Programming Interface, right? Let's go to W3Schools for a second. I always like to look at that. And again, this is kind of the most complete documentation uh, in one place, right? That's why I look at it, not because it's the only one. There's tons of examples out there. So if I say CSS transform, right? And I look at the transform property in CSS and go down here, it gives me examples of how this is done. And take a look what they do. They recommend a couple things. They say, take these properties first, then put your transform on the bottom. And that's why I'm getting this weird error. See this weird underline. So if I was to take this stuff, that's the first thing it says. Take this off and put this down here, right? This way, it's already seen these, and this one's the last one. So that's the right way to write it. That's the first thing. That's why I was giving me that, that error. Okay, so that's the first change we have to make. Let's go back. The next thing we have to think about from a transform perspective is how it works. The transform property applies a 2D or 3D transformation to an element. Okay, the default value is none. It's not inherited. Animatable is yes. Okay, we have to think about that for a second. And then version is CSS3, and they give you some syntax. Transform, none, or transform, whatever the transform functions are, initial, inherit, these are the things you can do. And then here's an example. None defines that there should be no transformation. So you want to undo a transformation, that's the way to do it. You could also put in a matrix. It defines a 2D transformation using a matrix of six values, right? Then there's matrix 3D, then there's translate, then there's rotate, which is what we want to do. And there's also scale. So if I wanted to scale something down and then rotate, I could do both, scale and then rotate. Let's try the scaling stuff. I like that scaling stuff. But this didn't work. On hover, it's supposed to be on hover. When I hover over this thing, right? Um, hey, what's going on? How come I can't hover over it and it, it can work? Like it should, right? I, can, I should be able to apply a hover to any element. Well, how about instead of doing this, I went like this, and I changed this to a P. Any P tag that, have, that I can I hover over, now you transform that, as opposed to targeting the div tag. Let's, let's see if that works any better. So I'm just going to refresh and go back to my example and refresh this thing. And then when I hover over my paragraph tag, ah, now that works. So when I hover, it's good, but it won't hover this whole thing because my hover doesn't work nicely on div tags. Right? But this works. See? So if I want to hover and rotate my paragraph, I can do that. What about if I want to, I want to um, not only when I, do I hover and it does this, but I also want to scale. So how does scaling work? So I say, well, um, let's try a moz-scale. And look, there isn't any scale uh, for that, right, scale. What if I just do scale, right? I want to scale. I want to do transform, right? So transform is what I got to put in there, transform. Scale, this is how you do it, and then you scale to what? Now, if you notice, if I go back to the to my page here, I can scale it to two times or 0.5 uh, or whatever. I put a, a, the, the degree I want to scale, so I say 0.5. I want to make it half as big, right? Okay, well, that's a little drastic. Let's make it 0.8, right? So 80% is large. I want to scale it, and then if you notice, transform um, scale is not giving me that error, right? Well, that it did before. So if I say transform and I want to say uh, dash moz or you know scale let's try this again dash moz dash transform scale I could do that too just to make sure it works properly right and then 0 0.8 right I need to move moz that takes that away one of them and then I can keep doing that I can say dash ms dash transform just to make sure it's correct scale 0.8, and by the way, some of them are not like, like this, it'll give me an error. Or what just, actually, it just ignores it. Dash O, dash transform, and then scale, 0.8. Oops. 
0.8. So 80% is what I'm saying. And then dash webkit, webkit dash, dash transform, and then scale, 0 0.8. Um, so webkit is for Chrome, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so I kind of covered all of them. So when I hover over it, not only will it rotate it, but it'll also rescale it to something else. Let's see. If you notice how these ones are not grayed out, but these ones are. Hmm. Talk about that in a second. Let's refresh. And if I go over it, now not only does it rotate, but it, oh, wait, what happened to my rotation? Look, look what happened. I went over here and then it, it's gone. How come? Well, because I'm doing multiple transforms at once. It's not keeping, it's not keeping both of my transforms, right? What if I want more than one transform? I want it to scale and rotate. How do I do that, right? Because right now it only takes the last transform, right? It wipes out the other one. Okay, let's go back to W3 schools and see if it can be done, right? So if you notice, it says transform none and then whatever functions I want. Hmm. Does that mean that I can do more than one at once, right? And the, actual, the, the example is, I think I can. Right? So let's see how we do that. So that means, if I go back to my code, that I want to do scale and rotate. I want to rotate first, and then, can I write scale? I can't. So I can almost like I'm, I'm what I'm doing is, I'm actually um, um, joining them together, right? Oh. There we go. Let's see if I can do this. So I want to scale, scale, scale. So I ro rotate and then I scale. Let's see if that's possible. And then it's given me a bit of an error. Let's see if it uh, if it's going to work. If I make if I made a mistake, let's see if this all works. So again, I'm rotating and scaling all at the same time. Can I can I bridge them or combine them in this way? And that's the question that you should ask yourself. Can it can both be done at one with one line? Right? I can do one and then the other, but then the second one eats my first one. So let's let's see how it works now. So I'm going to go back to this, refresh. And when I kind of come up here now, it's transformed both ways. So scaled and rotated by, you know, by a little bit. It's kind of a weird effect, right? But you can definitely do that. Imagine if you, don't want, you want to do something like that here in your element to create that kind of hover effect where I scale and rotate what I'm hovering over. That's more of a useful, useful effect to give you kind of a weird you know, hover for the whole element. I don't know how it would affect my, my links. Hey, how does this work from a responsive perspective? Does this still work, right? And you get some weird kind of effects here, especially you see this bouncing stuff, how it bounces in and out as I move my mouse. Because hover, you don't want to hover and do that weird stuff, right? Too much. Okay. Examples of scaling and rotating. So that's transform. Okay, so now I want to use my transition property. So I don't just go bam and I'm scaling and transforming right away. I want it to happen, um, as an example on hover, I want it to happen in a very nice way, right? How do I do that, right? So again, I want to do some stuff. I want to scale and rotate. And then I also want it to nicely transition there. I want you to get there over a two second period. So when I hover over it, it's gonna, you're gonna see the animation of it scaling and transforming. Well, I gotta use this transition property to do that. And that happens at the bottom, just like this. So I'm just gonna copy this line here so I don't have to, copy, so I don't have to type it. I'm going to copy this thing, and I'm going to go over here to my CSS, and I want it to be smooth, right? And let's see this happen. Okay, well, notice what happens here. Let's see this, like, underline. It says, hey, you forgot to include the Moz trans transition and the, the MS transition, because it tells you what to add in there. For Moz, uh, Opera, and WebKit, i got to put those in there. So Moz, Mozilla, Moz-transform, uh, and then, again, background. Here's something that's that, or that's transform transition, uh -huh. transition, and then background color. I want to transition my background color. Uh, now, wait, hold on a second. I don't have a background color. Hmm. Uh, two seconds, and then it says linear, right? Well, that's weird. That doesn't really do it. And then it also tells me to add in Opera and WebKit. So here's Opera you know, as an example, and then I'm trying to do everything at once, uh, the um, transition, right, and then my background color, that's what I'm transitioning, right? 
which is linear, or two seconds linear, right? Okay, cool. And then there's also the other one. I miss. I got my Moz, right? It's my Moz, and I'm also missing um, the WebKit one, right? So, WebKit. It's WebKit. I'm typing this by hand, so you see how long it takes, right? It's WebKit. Transition. And see if I get any, make any mistakes. Uh, background color. Uh, and then it's uh, two seconds linear. All right, so I've got a bunch of them, and then it says, hey, what about, it says, browsing compatible, but add missing standard property transition. Hmm. Well, so now it expects me to do one of these. Look, so take this and go up here. That's what it wants to do, and it says, well, something's wrong, right? I'm getting all these underlines, right? Transition, 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 linear, and they're all different ways, and now I'm gonna run this and see what the hell happens. And it says background color, right? Now, is that what I really want? Background color I'm taking from over here, right? It says, hey, here's my background color. I want to move to this background color. But you know what? I want to transition the background color. So what if I was just to type this and actually read it? So transition. And then it says, example, what am I transitioning? Am I transitioning all? What kind of transition can I do? A, li a linear transition, a step end, an, e an ease in, an ease out. What am I doing, right? Can I, can I, can I, I uh, target my transform. Can I go transform? So I'm targeting my transform. That's what I really want to do. And I want to do my two seconds linear. Not my background color because that's not changing. Just my transform. So let's, let's do instead of my background color, I want to, whatever my transformation is happening, whatever I'm transforming, I want to target that, that thing that I'm doing, right? That's what I want to target, not the background color. So let's see if this is going to work, right? Okay, that's cool. Now it's telling me I don't have it. So I'm going to kind of get rid of this and put that down here. And now we have the proper thing. Why? I never had any, any kind of thing up here in terms of my transform, right? That's why I was giving me these errors. Now it's not giving me errors anymore. Okay, let's see what it does, right? This is all, I, bomb, I hand bomb this one for you just so you know what it looks like. All right, so let's refresh. And I hover over it. And now what I get is a bit of a transition over two seconds. See that? And if I, well, well what happens when I, when I, how on out, I hover, I, I, I've left it. So this is hover, right? And then this, how about, about, how about when it comes out? I want it to, I don't want it to transition back when I come out of there, when I kind of mouse out, right? How do I do that? Well, this is linear, right? And then if you notice, there's different ones you can use, right? So now, instead of me figuring this out and me trying to find out the API documentation, and I, by the way, I can by going to my transform property here, my trans, and if I, instead of here in my W3 schools, I want to search for something else, right? I want to search for something else. I want to say uh, CSS transition really quickly, and then it tells you how to do CSS transitions. It's an in-depth document on how to do it, the compatibility and everything else, and it shows you this. Here's my, my width, my height, my background, and I want to get a transition of, of width. I'm only hitting my width. That's what I want to change. That's changing of two seconds. That's what I'm targeting, right? If I want to change several properties, I can chain them together. That's what I was doing using property chaining. I want to hit my width and my height, right? I want to use different kind of speed, right? My timing function, I can hit a, you know, for my div, I can hit a linear, ease and ease in and ease out, all that kind of stuff. I can delay the transition effect one second, you know, how long it takes. And I can do a transition and a transformation, right, by doing everything all at once, right? And different kinds of transitions. So if you look at here, it tells you how to put things together so you can uh, choose different transitions. There's transition delay, transition timing, all this kind of stuff. But I don't want to remember all this stuff because I'm probably never going to use these, these very often. So what do I do? I go down to my little link that I've showed you before. I'm going to go to this one choose something to do, my CSS3 generator, and I want to do some kind of transition. And what do I want to hit? I want to hit my, um, it tells me my background, my color, my height, my width, my outline, whatever, what do I want to change? My background color. And I want to make it so that I can choose how it is in seconds, let's say two seconds. And what my function is going to be, ease in, and then it gives me my code. That's one site you can use, right? So tells you how to do all this stuff really over and this is it tells you the hover effect hover in hover out right hover over it right 
Now, what are the others, other things that you can, when I go back to my, um, my regular state, right? So I'm hovering over and I'm hovering out. Remember what, what it is? Well, there's two uh, things on hover, this happens. What happens when I leave, right? So if I want that same effect to happen, and P hover is one thing, but what if I want to do some other kind of effects? If I go P colon, right? And if I look at different things here, right? So if I look down, and if I, it says active, before, checked, disabled, empty, enabled, focus, full screen, future, host, there's different ones you can do. These are all the, the pseudo uh, classes you can use. Optional, out of range, only child, uh, past, read only, required, scope, target, valid, and visited. Those are all the ones that you can use, right? So what about if it's I'm hovering over it and it's just, you know, as an example, it's moving from one state to the other. For example, I'm, I'm moving over the, uh, it's a state, right? So full screen or future or hover. What if, what if I'm hovering out? Like I'm, I'm, as I'm leaving, I want it to transition back. I don't want it to transform it only one way. I want it transforming in and out, like a smooth transform. What happens there? How do I do that? So what's the event that I'm going to hit? Well, I don't know if I can't remember what it is. So let's go to another website to give me that CSS information. I'm going to go to this other one, CSS3 Maker, right? which gives me some really cool information here. I want to go to uh, transition or transform. Here's my transition. And it shows me, um, here's my duration, right? I can choose how many seconds I want, right? And then what am I, pro what am I transitioning? All my properties, right? And then I want to rotate, I want to scale um, on hover, right? What about when I'm in on normal? I want to rotate back. I want to kind of get everything back to normal. I want to get everything to Scale is equal to 100%, right? So let's go back to scale of 1, right? So I want to scale everything as normal. This is So no, no skewing, right? So I want to go back to uh, uh, 0 degrees, right? So 0 degrees. My translating is going to go back to um, nothing. So 0 pixels. Let me see if I can go back to zeros. I want all this stuff. So you see what it does. It, it rotates it. So rotate it. I want it to rotate zero. Right. So I don't want it to rotate. So zero degrees. And what I want it to do is on normal. Well, what? what how do I do that? Well, two things. It gives me a class, right? And it says on the regular the regular state. Um, I want to hit all my transitions, and I want to say um, I'm hitting everything, but I'm I'm putting everything back. That's what I want to do. So instead of three degree rotation, I'm going to go back to normal. That's really what I'm saying here. And I don't have to think about this. This is what happens. So you have the, the normal state plus the hover state. Right? Makes sense? Let's figure that, let's fix this up. So but if you don't know what to do, it definitely, it definitely gives you the ability to do it here to show you an example of what it's going to look like. But then it also tells me what to do if I forgot. So now what I need to do is on hover, well, that's one thing, right? But what I want to do is all my P tags, do I have another um, piece of code for all my p tags. Well, so far I don't. I don't see any kind of. I'm not specifically targeting paragraph tags except for down there. So that's good. That's the first thing. So what I'm saying is, on all other paragraph tags, on regular paragraph tags, do the same thing. Do all this. I'm going to copy and paste here for a second. Watch what I'm going to do. Except transform everything back to normal. So zero degrees, as an example. I'm going to put all this back to zero. Scale of one, right? And uh, go to zero degrees. It tells me also that I should I should disable this. Um, I should actually just go zero. So scale of zero. So this is the one thing I got to do. Move all this to zero, and then move all this to one. So instead of it going to uh, 0.8, right? I'm going to go to one. And follow me here. What's going to happen? What happens when it's one and 0.8? What, what one and zero it means I'm not transforming. I'm putting everything back the way it was, right? And I want to move everything back within two seconds. So it's a kind of a two seconds in, or one. Let's go from instead of two seconds, we'll go one second. So it's going to get there from one in one second as opposed to two seconds. Follow me here, right? So I'm going to move this to one second delay. I'm going to transform everything with one second and move everything back to normal. So I've got two states, right? Except this one doesn't have the hover class. This is the normal one. So the regular paragraph tags, regular ones, are going to do this. They're going to set everything back to normal. And when I 
hover over things, then it's going to go this way, right? The other way around. Let's see how this works. I'm going to refresh. I'm going to go back to this page here and refresh. That's normal. So I hover over it, it transforms in, and I hover out, it transforms back. See, look, kind of a smoother transform. That's a linear transform. If I want to ease in or ease out, which I recommend, it looks much better than an ease uh, than a, a linear transform. And you know what? One second is really freaking long for a transformation, right? You have to wait for things to go. Like I want it a little bit faster than one second. So I want to make it so it's like half a second or 300 milliseconds or whatever. So you can go like do like one of these 0.5 seconds, right? So I want to copy these and I want to do a 0.5 second transformation. When I do this stuff. So that's one thing. And I'll do the same thing down here. 0.5 seconds here, here, and here. And now let's see what we get. Okay, so I refre refresh everything now. And refresh. And I do one half in and half out. And look how fast it is though. See, half in and half out. Really much faster. That's a little better. And now instead of linear, like I have here, I want an ease in, right? So here's an ease in. All right, so I'll take a different kind of a different kind of step. So instead of a linear, because this thing's the exact same speed all the way, I don't want that. I want an ease in, which is a different kind of, of uh, oh, come on, if I can copy this properly. Jesus, how about we just replace the whole thing? Ease in. Uh, and I'm timing out here, but um, you get what I'm doing, I think. Ease in. And let's just grab this for a second. Copy and paste over here because I want to ease in here. All right. And let's see how that looks. And then I'll stop recording. Fresh. And now I'm going to ease in fast and then ease out. See how it's different? So it speeds up and then it speeds up. So it's not as, it does not the same linear transformation. It kind of speeds up to, to ease in and out. And if you notice, even at 0.3 and 0.3, it's still quite big. It's still big. Like my, my ease in and ease out is still too long. I would probably make it like even shorter, 0.1, 0.2. So it gets there faster because it's just too slow for me. If I'm going to do, especially if I use a menu or something. All right, that's it for me for this, for this day. Next day, we'll talk about other stuff.